Reaction Beanie Yo 317 Day in the neighborhood My brothers and sisters TGIL once again y'all Thank God it is Friday once again We have made it through another week And y'all know over here on Fridays That we watch some crazy videos Like this channel we are about to go to Have the most what is going on type of video That have you thinking so hard And just like Ooh we on questioning reality and that channel is AJ from The Y Files. The Y File Friday, y'all. And check the title of the video out now. The Moon's Dark Secret. Aliens harvesting human souls for food. That whole title crazy. D the Moon Dark Secret. What the hell the moon got going on that we don't know about? Aliens harvesting human souls for food. Now, I'm just going to try to make a prediction, and I know it's going to be crazy as hell, but it, from this title, this is what it sounded like. It sounded like, because I believe that human got souls, and I know most of y'all believe it out there believe that we got souls too, and when we die, our souls going to go somewhere else. Now, what if we, after we die, our souls go somewhere where goddamn aliens eating them or something? I don't freaking know, man, but this one going to be crazy. Don't get excited, y'all. So, we're going to go and get into it. But before we get into it, my brothers and sisters, y'all know what y'all got to do. Get whatever you make name. Get what you need to Wi Fi Fridays, my brothers and sisters. Y'all got what y'all need, y'all ready to go? Then let's fucking go. This episode of the Wi Files is brought to you by the military online game War Thunder. Your world is an illusion. Your choices are irrelevant. Your friends, your family, and everyone around you are just manifestations of your mind. You're a trapped animal in a cage, a virtual reality created more than 250,000 years ago for a single purpose, to use you as food. Your emotions are food for those who created the cage. Feelings of happiness and joy are digestible, but those emotions are nowhere near as nourishing as sadness, malice, and especially anger. Pain on a small scale is good, but pain due to war, famine, and pandemics? Well, that's even better. You're born, you grow, and you spend the first third of your life learning how to live in a society that barely knows you exist. Maybe get married, have kids, maybe even grandkids. Then you die, and the pain ends. But death is just the beginning, because now you get to do it all over again. Get whatever you may need. And I got to speak on that very first part that AJ was talking about, man. Because I, I don't think I ever told this to nobody. And I know some of y'all out there going to feel me when I say it. I know I can't be the only one in the world who feel like this. I don't feel like this, but I've thought about it a lot of times ever since I was a little child. Like, don't you just feel like sometimes nothing else exists but you? Meaning, and what I mean by that, just follow me, my brothers and sisters. Like, whatever you seeing right now, whatever you are seeing... That's the only thing that exists. If you don't see it, it's not existing. Like, you, think about your coworkers or your family. Like, they don't exist as long as you're not seeing them. They only start to exist again once you see them. Now, I know this shit might sound crazy as hell to a lot of y'all. And I wish I could explain it better, man. Like, I don't believe that to be the case. But it's just something in me that make me feel like that. Like, yeah. Like, I, I, I done got all work, so that whole job, the streets, nothing outside of my peripherals right now exists. Sometimes I just feel like that. I know I'm a little loopy, but I know some of y'all know what I'm saying, too. Now, let's go. It's only dogs and cats you don't find home. And y'all fuck with helper fish, man. Damn, helper fish all up in a lobby or something. But I know some of y'all know what I'm saying, man. Like, 
like like the world was just created for you like everything in the world created for you or something i don't freaking know man hold up let me see all right let's go back let's go ancient sumerian texts and that's where nope hold up let's go my fault The oldest recorded history comes from ancient Sumerian texts. And that's where we're first introduced to the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki are believed to be seven deities, also referred to as the seven gods who decree. Their purpose was to determine the fate of mankind, and their stories mirror some that we find in Greek mythology. And like the Greek gods, the Anunnaki dwell in the heavens, but also interact with people and influence events here on Earth. Gods from polytheistic religions like the Anunnaki, the Greek gods, and the Roman gods served many purposes. They were used to explain natural phenomena like Zeus creating thunderstorms. Thor also served this role in Norse mythology. The gods provided comfort about the uncertainties of life and questions about mortality, the afterlife, and human suffering. Gods and their myths established social norms and values. Myths often included lessons about the virtues of honesty, courage, and wisdom, or the danger of hubris and deceit. Worshiping gods who represent these qualities creates a framework for a social and moral order. Gods are part of the creation myth of many cultures, used to explain the origin of mankind. This was also true for the ancient Sumerians. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, written thousands of years ago, the Anunnaki are directly involved in the creation of humans. However, mm. the stories about the Anunnaki might not be myths. The stories might be history. Mm. Zechariah Sitchin in his book, The Twelfth Planet, claims the Anunnaki are actually aliens who visited Earth thousands of years ago from their home planet Nibiru. When they arrived, the deity called Enki added alien DNA to ancient man, and the result was us. Mm. The intention was to create a slave species to mine gold for the Anunnaki. The gold was refined and used in terraforming their home planet, which was suffering from a poisoned atmosphere. Now this may sound like a far-fetched story to some, well, not to me. but this creation story shows up in other cultures as well. There is an ancient Zulu legend about two brothers named Wawani and Mpanku, who were from an alien race with scaly skin. <laughs> Thousands of years ago, the brothers stole an egg from a fire dragon, emptied out the yolk until it was hollow, and then rolled it across the sky to Earth. That egg was the moon. What the fuck? Many ancient texts describe a time when the moon didn't exist, or at least it didn't exist here. Aristotle wrote about the Pelasgians, who lived in ancient Greece since the oldest days, at a time before the moon. Apollonius of Rhodes also talks about a time when the moon wasn't yet in the sky. In ages past, before the silver orb adorned night's somber shroud, Gaia stood alone. The tides lay still untouched by Luna's grasp, and darkness reigned where moonlight never cast its tranquil spell. Oh, how the gods conspired to shape that radiant disk. Greek historian Plutarch wrote about the Arcadians. They were a very ancient people who lived in Greece. Plutarch described them as a pre-lunar people. Roman poet Ovid also wrote about the Arcadians. In Arcadia's lush fields, where Pan's flute sang, a truth lies hidden nearly forgot by man. The Arcadians are said to have possessed their land before the birth of Zeus, and the folk is older than the moon. I just gotta say real quick, y'all. I have never in my life heard about the moon not e existing at some point. You know what I'm saying? And people was already on this planet before the moon started existing. Like that right there, I never even considered it. And for this to even be a theory, I never even heard of whatever you want to call a conspiracy. I never heard of this. So it's so interesting to just hear about it. Educational video. Evidence of a sky with no moon has also been found on the other side of the world. In the ancient site of Tiwanaku in Bolivia, there are symbols that depict the moon coming into orbit. And this happened at a specific moment in time thousands of years ago, long before recorded history. According to the Zulu and other ancient cultures, the moon didn't form. The moon was built and not built here. The Zulus say that the moon was built in another part of the galaxy by the alien race that Wawani and Mpanku came from. They built the moon as a monitoring station to keep an eye on us, the human race. But what? 
kind of aliens are depicted in these old legends. They're not the small gray aliens. The aliens that built the moon are reptilian. Ah, lizard people. Yep, lizard people. Lizard. 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 Better. Let's go. Let's go. David Icke has written over 20 books about various conspiracy theories. He's covered everything from the Illuminati to UFOs to the multiverse. He's my hero. But he's probably best known for his theory about a humanoid reptilian race. Well, it's not a theory if it's true. Do you mind? Uh, sorry, sorry. Lizard people get me really excited. Oh, uh, I know. Uh oh, did you know you can buy a lizard people coffee mug from the iFile store? No merch plugs, please. <laughs> Ike claims that humans share the Earth with a race of shape-shifting reptilian humanoids called the Archons. Wawani and Ampanku, the brothers from the Zulu legend who brought the moon to Earth, were Archons. The Sumerians called these Archon brothers Enki and Enlil, who were also rulers of the Anunnaki. This race of reptilians primarily lives underground, but a few of them live among us as well. The surface-dwelling beings are here to make sure humanity stays compliant with and unaware of their plan. They're involved in the highest levels of government, business, and technology. They're monarchs, politicians, and bankers. They own and operate major media companies. Mark, are the allegations true that you're secretly a lizard? Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go with no on that. Uh, I, I, am, I am not a lizard. I am not a lizard. They influence every aspect of human life. They are the Illuminati. When we describe the reptilians as shapeshifters, you might think of a creature that physically changes its shape, like Odo from Star Trek, Mystique from Marvel Comics or Tonks from Harry Potter. Reptilians don't do this. They actually always look like themselves. What they do is manipulate the human brain to perceive them differently. The source of the reptilians' power is their ability to alter our perception of reality. And they don't do this with telepathy. They do this with technology. According to David Icke, the moon is not only a spacecraft, but also a holographic projection device. The broadcasts from the moon warp our reality, or at least our perception of reality. There's what's known as a frequency embargo around the Earth. Wait, 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 wait. Who enforces this uh, embargo? Well, there's a bunch of alien races who are part of a galactic federation, and they keep an eye on the reptilians, but it, it's a whole thing. Go on, I got time. No, it needs its own video. <laughs> she got me all excited. This is a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> there is much more to reality than we can perceive with our senses. And the human brain is quite capable of experiencing the true universe. In fact, it was specifically designed to do so. But the frequencies that would allow us to see the real world are being blocked. Instead, we're locked into this simple three-dimensional existence. But there is much more being withheld from us. If you believe in simulation theory, then these beings are the creators of the simulation. If you're religious, then these beings are demons or jinn. Either way, they're not our friends. But why? Why would an advanced race want to keep humans oblivious to the real world? Well, when humans were first created, the alien creators learned something. All other animals on Earth are driven by instinct. The instinct to eat, to survive, to reproduce, and that's about it. But when the first humans were given sentience, a byproduct of that sentience was emotion. Sure, humans are still driven by instinct. We're driven to survive and reproduce like every other animal. Ugh, and I got the guppy support payments to prove it. Oof, ah. Uh. But because humans are now aware of themselves and their existence, they experience the world differently. They experience fear of the future. Humans experience the pleasure of nostalgia for the past. No other animal has this gift or this curse. Animals kill for survival, but humans kill out of hate. Our alien creators learned that our emotions carry energy. And the creators learn that this energy can be consumed for nourishment. Unfortunately for us, negative emotions are the most nourishing of all. Some have described the alien desire for negative human emotion as a drug addiction. Now, if humans were able to see and understand our true reality, we'd know that our energy, or soul, or spirit, or whatever you want to call it, can move to a higher plane of existence after we die. But instead, the alien creators, addicted to our emotions, keep us here. We're born, we live to feed the creators, then we die. Then we come back and do it all over again. It's forced reincarnation. This I 
ain't gonna lie, y'all. This theory, I'm really like, like I can't say if I believe all this shit or not, but I can say that this is complex and everything. It's like the more I'm listening, the more I'm like, hmm, this is a strong possibility, though. This is this could be possible. And the main thing that got me that I haven't heard or never even thought about, everything that Wi Fi be saying, I never even thought about before, man. And that go for all his video we can watch. But I'm talking about this right here. This the part that got me. When he said that the damn aliens, they they blocking us from really seeing what's really out there, from really seeing that they really lizards in our faces because they just didn't put some kind of shield or a hex on all humans where we can't see that shit. That shit kind of makes sense to me. That shit kind of, I, 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 can, I can get with that. I can get with that. But let's keep going, y'all. I'm enjoying this. This is, I'm, 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 I'm just enjoying the, the complexity of this conspiracy. This process is handled by a piece of equipment that's been called a soul recycler or a soul cube, which is a large box-shaped device that's installed on the moon. The cube watches us and then transmits our energy back to Earth after we die over and over again and has been doing so for thousands of years. Now, I know the theory sounds like science fiction, but many skeptics were turned into believers on December 6, 2021. That's when, completely by accident, a lunar probe took a picture of the Soul Cube. What the fuck? It's my conclusion um, over many years that uh, reincarnation is a trap. It's not that it doesn't exist, although I don't think it, it's quite the same as it's explained. It's a bit more subtle, maybe, but I do think it's a trap. The recycling of souls, reincarnation, is the machinery of this universe. John Lear, son of Learjet inventor Bill Lear, flew his first flight at age 14. He became a stunt pilot, a contract pilot for the CIA, and set multiple aviation records. But John Lear is most known for his theories about the alien presence on Earth. He's also exposed a lot of information about the cube-shaped soul catcher on the moon. The soul catcher is the, what we, I think, is the uh, six-mile-high uh, tower in the middle of Sinus Medi, right in the middle of the uh, center of the moon, as you look at the moon, and uh, the famous photo that Richard found, uh, Lunar Orbiter 384M, shows that huge tower and he also has two other photographs that uh, that show that tower uh, i think that tower is um, what i call the soul catcher when you uh, die your soul is the ghost of the soul catcher but the moon isn't the only place these soul catchers exist there are several uh, soul uh, transmission stations both on Earth and on the Moon, and depending on where you're going in your next lifetime, uh, is which transmission station uh, takes over. When you couple John Lear's belief in the Soul Catcher with David Icke's theory that we're stuck in an endless loop of reincarnation, an unsettling reality emerges that our only purpose is to serve as food for our alien jailers. And what's even more upsetting is that negative emotions are really what they crave. Supporters of the reptilian humanoid theory say that when there's a global event that affects millions of people, like a war or major conflict, it's our jailers at work. It might explain why Cro-Magnon Homo sapiens sapien is so violent. Why are we always in states of war? Why are we competing and always challenged by murder and violence? And y'all know what just popped in my head too, man. That's why I'm fucking with this theory or conspiracy, whatever you want to call it. Because even me, myself, this, this is what I actually believe in. Yes, I do believe in aliens. No doubt about it. I believe in aliens. But the question I always run into is, why haven't they fucking just came down here and just destroyed us? You know what I'm saying? Like, why haven't they just fucking killed all of us or came down here and made us they slaves or something because apparently we know that they got way further advanced technology than we got so that's my only thing that i've been having problems with but listening to this now it all makes sense 
maybe the reason they ain't came to kill us is because they feeding off our souls and recycling our life, our lifetime to eat more off us. Maybe that reason, long story short, short story long, the aliens ain't killed uh, humans or destroyed the earth is because they fucking need us. That, that kind of helped my theory out, man. Let's keep going, y'all. It just popped in my head. Kind of makes sense. I really don't like the idea that we're not in control of our lives. And I really hate the idea that we're not in control of our death. So my mind just rejects the idea altogether. But then I found this. What the sh is that? That is the soul cube on the moon. Leaping lizards! See what I did there? This photo was taken December 6, 2021 by the Chinese-made lunar rover U-22 while exploring the far side of the moon. A cube-shaped object is clearly seen 80 meters from the Von Karman crater. And for some reason, the China National Space Administration labeled this object Mystery Hut. And this only lends credence to the idea that the moon is a sort of observatory with a soul-harvesting machine. There's even more evidence that Earth is actually what some call a prison planet. In his book, Humans Are Not From Earth, Dr. Ellis Silver contends that humans are actually from another planet. They were brought here thousands of years ago and mated with Neanderthals. The hybrid species is us. My thesis proposes that mankind did not evolve from native Earth organisms, but evolved elsewhere and was transported to Earth between 60,000 and 200,000 years ago. Mankind is supposedly the most highly developed species on the planet, yet is surprisingly unsuited and ill-equipped for Earth's environment. That's a cool ass theory too. Like, like I'm not saying that I believe none of this shit, y'all, 100%, but boy, it make you think. That's a possibility I never thought of. What if humans did come from a whole nother planet and then they came to Earth and, and had sex with uh, primates or Neanderthal, whatever the fuck you want to call it, monkeys, gorillas, apes, orangutans, and then they end up having us and we just like a mixture of both of them. I really believe that and believe that our organisms came from out of the sea. Then it started to form up over millions of years. I have a lot. I don't, I, I don't really like that theory that we came out of the water as organisms and now we're humans. I really like. I rather go with that theory. Let's go. The idea that extraterrestrials played a role in human history is also known as intervention theory. Dr. Silver argues that if humans actually evolved on Earth, we'd be much more comfortable with the environment. For example, humans are really the only animals that are susceptible to sunburn. Fish, reptiles, birds, all have natural ultraviolet protection in their scales and feathers. Whales and dolphins have special skin cells that repair DNA damaged by UV radiation. Any mammal with fur is protected from ultraviolet rays, including apes. If we evolved from apes, why did we lose our hair? Evolution is supposed to make us stronger, not weaker. Eh, not true for your Uncle Vito. That's true, he's pretty hairy. Pretty hairy? Ugh, I bet that guy can open a banana with his feet. Dr. <laughs> Silver points out that human babies are basically helpless at birth. They require constant attention for years or they'll die. Yes, some species of animals require parental care for a time after birth, but there are plenty of species that require none. Insects, fish, and most reptiles are born completely self-sufficient. Some land mammals are born standing up. Some birds are born with their eyes open and able to find food on their own. No other animal on the planet is as helpless as we are at birth. Damn, AJ is speaking, like spitting facts, man. Like why is we supposed to, humans supposed to be the most advanced species or whatever the word I'm looking for on earth smarter more intelligent than any other uh, animal but why don't we have basic fucking instincts and shit like they got like why when we have babies they literally depend on their mama and daddy or those they depend on somebody to take care of them for years when you got goddamn dogs and cats out here <laughs> Um, little kittens and pups in a couple of days, well, weeks. Let me not exaggerate. A couple of weeks, and they gone by themselves. Or birds, you know what I'm saying? Or or the elephants. Like, why don't? And then the sunburn shit. Why? Like, humans go through shit that animals don't have to go through. 
and we supposed to be the most evolved ones of all. I'm sorry, y'all. This shit blowing my mind. I can't. I can't help it. Silver claims the reason so many people have bad backs is that we evolved on a planet with less gravity. That's why, as we age, our knees and hips give out. We're not designed to be so heavy. We're also prone to chronic illness more than other mammals. So why were we brought here in the first place? Well, Silver has a few ideas. One is that humans were brought to Earth as a natural predator to wipe out other species. Now, if that's true, it worked. At one time, there were several different hominid species living on Earth at the same time. As recently as just 40,000 years ago, Neanderthals, Denisovans, and at least one other species coexisted with each other for several hundred thousand years. Then modern man arrived and suddenly all other species were gone. But Dr. Silver has another theory that tracks with a lot of what we've discussed today. That humans were removed from our natural environment because we were violent, we were destructive, and we overconsumed natural resources. Well, that hasn't changed. The theory said that the aliens erased our memories so we'd have no recollection of the civilizations and technologies we left behind. Then they dropped us off on Earth and left us to our own devices. They watched us for a while to see how we developed, and eventually they left. All the UFO activity we're seeing now could be our creators coming to check on their creation. Maybe they're checking to see if we've evolved past our violent tendencies. Maybe we're finally ready to be released from our prison and reintegrate into galactic society. If that's really why they're here, then unfortunately for us, our parole, it's going to be denied. Damn. The existence of the human soul has been pondered, well, forever. Greek philosophers like Plato and Socrates proposed an immortal soul that lives on after the body's death. Many religions say the soul originates from God and exists eternally. But does scientific evidence support the existence of a soul that can be quantified? In the early 20th century, physician Duncan McDougall tried to determine if the soul had measurable mass. He thought that if a soul existed, it would have weight. So upon death, the soul would escape and the weight loss could be detected. Mm. McDougall had six dying patients placed on sensitive scales, finding that they lost an average of 21 grams at the moment of death. He concluded this represented the soul's mass. But this small sample size and errors in methodology cast doubt on the experiment. Modern neuroscience says our consciousness and sense of self exist in our physical brain, not a separate soul. Brain imaging shows that our personality, our memories, and capabilities are tied to physical patterns and activity within our neurons. Damage to certain areas of the brain through injury or disease can impact sensory perception, mobility, emotions, and even one's identity. However, there is an argument that, sure, the brain is responsible for cognition and awareness, but a soul could simply be energy that creates our consciousness. And if so, that consciousness could continue after death. According Exactly, man. And that's just how I feel, y'all. Like, I, it, our soul is within us, but it's not, you can't go inside our brain and find it. I don't feel like you can find, like, I don't, us as humans, as science people, you cannot find our soul, but it's something inside of us that y'all feel just like I feel, man. It's some, like, kind of light, some kind of burning feeling. Like, I ain't being funny, man, but I feel it inside of me. Like, you can explain consciousness and all that technical. Yeah, that's probably possible somewhere in our head. But our soul is within us and it can't be explained. But it's dealt. According to new theories using quantum physics, the soul may exist in another dimension beyond our normal space-time. Some tie this to quantum non-locality and entanglement. This is where information is passed between particles not just faster than the speed of light, but instantly, no matter how far apart they are. This theory says the soul interacts with the human body through quantum states, exchanging information instantly across any distance. Studies of near-death experiences provide intriguing reports of the soul leaving the body and passing through a tunnel and encountering angelic beings or dead relatives. Yet neuroscience says many elements of NDEs are generated by physical brain activity under stress. Out-of-body and near-death episodes have been induced in controlled settings by stimulating specific parts of the brain. Conclusive scientific evidence of the human soul has yet to be discovered.
But maybe the soul isn't meant to be detected with a scale or a microscope or a computer. And just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Religions around the world say the soul is eternal. In Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, the soul originates from God and can achieve eternal life through faith and virtuous living. Hinduism and Sikhism believe the soul is immortal and reincarnated based on karma. Buddhism is a little different, though. The Wheel of Life provides a symbolic map of samsara in Buddhism. Buddhists must attain enlightenment before moving beyond this cycle, and that can take many, many tries. And that's starting to sound a lot like the Soul Recycler. And here's something interesting. In the image of the Wheel of Life, which is found on the walls of monasteries and schools all over the world, Buddha... The fuck? Buddha's pointing at the moon. Oh, shit. The moon is the most familiar object in the night sky. It's inspired stories and myths and even religions. The moon has fueled scientific intrigue throughout human history. But here's the thing. The moon is weird. By all accounts, it shouldn't even be there. The moon's orbit is extremely close to the Earth. In fact, it's the largest moon in relation to its host planet in our entire solar system, or any solar system. We've never found anything like this in the galaxy. And this proximity has made total solar eclipses possible. This is because of the precise diameters and distances between the Sun, Moon, and Earth. This is an unbelievable coincidence. Some might say, impossible. There is no astronomical reason why the Moon and the Sun should fit so well. It is the sheerest of coincidences, and only the Earth among all the planets is blessed in this fashion. It's not only too close, it's too big. That's what she said. What? Using other planets as a reference, the size of the moon should be about 40 miles in diameter. That's it. It's over 2,000 miles wide. This is also not seen anywhere else. The closest comparison is Pluto and its moon Charon, which is about two-thirds the size of Pluto. But this probably doesn't count because Pluto and Charon are a double dwarf planet. That's what she said. What? The Earth and moon are also really a double planet. But there's something else strange about that. The barycenter, or center of gravity between the Earth and Moon, is inside the Earth. That means there should be a wobble in the Moon's orbit. The Moon does wobble a little bit, but its orbit is one of the most perfectly circular that's ever been seen. The Moon is also precisely locked in orbit so the same side always faces Earth. This is also highly unusual among Moons and planets. Some scientists argue that the Moon doesn't wobble because it's not very dense. But that's also a problem. If the Moon and Earth were formed at the same time, which is the leading theory, then why is the Earth so much more dense? Because the Moon is hollow. Right. The Lunar Orbiter experiments vastly improved our knowledge of the Moon's gravitational field, indicating the frightening possibility that the Moon might be hollow. In November 1969, Apollo 12 launched as NASA's second manned mission to the Moon. One of the key objectives was investigating the Moon's interior. Apollo 12 astronauts placed seismometers on the lunar surface, similar to those used to detect earthquakes on Earth. The astronauts then intentionally crashed their ascent stage module into the Moon to gather seismic data. Now, instead of typical seismic patterns, the data showed the Moon vibrating for over an hour. The moon was famously described as ringing like a bell. The phenomenon led some to speculate that the moon might be hollow or contain significant hollow spaces. This theory is supported by the still classified Apollo 17 project called Chapel Bell. And this sounds like an experiment that has something to do with sound, but all these years later, it's still classified. Why? In 1970, two Soviet scientists proposed that not only is the moon hollow, the moon is an artificial spacecraft brought to Earth a long time ago. This spaceship moon theory explains many of the anomalies, like the low density, the sound reverberation, and why the moon is even here at all. Spaceship moon also explains the strange crater issue. Crater issue? Oh yeah, moon craters are very odd. When an asteroid impacts a moon or planet, it leaves a crater. The bigger the asteroid, the deeper the crater, right? Yeah, I feel you. Well, on the moon, no matter how big the object that impacts it, Craters don't penetrate deeper than a couple of miles. Mm. And this could be explained by a rigid, impenetrable outer shell encasing the moon. Space. So long story short, short story long, 
AJ saying that it's something inside the moon, like a what I'm imagining is like a AJ. I say AJ again, a alien fucking civilization might be living inside the moon, or that might be the center of the spaceship or something. Hey man, I wouldn't even be surprised if it is. I if, 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 if the truth ever came out and that's what the truth was, I wouldn't be fucking surprised. Anything is possible. Chip Moon. Mm hmm. If the astronomical data is reduced, it is found that the data require that the interior of the moon is less dense than the outer parts. Indeed, it would seem that the moon is more like a hollow than a homogeneous sphere. Data also indicates the moon's core is less dense than the outer layers, the complete opposite of, well, every other celestial object ever discovered. This could be evidence that the moon has vast hollow inner cavities. Also, the soil and moon dust on the surface are actually older than the rock and soil within the moon. Mm. That only makes sense if the interior moon was mined, hollowed out, and then the material brought to the surface. Now, there are scientific explanations for all of this, but to be honest, they fall short. Looking at all the anomalies and unanswered questions about the moon, the best explanation for the moon is an observational error. It doesn't exist. It's easier to explain the non-existence of the moon than its existence. We cannot help but come to the conclusion that the moon, by rights, ought not to be there. The fact that it is, is one of those strokes of luck almost too good to accept. The moon is weird. It shouldn't be there, and it might be hollow. But is it a transmission device that affects our behavior? Well, there's more crime during a full moon. There are more car accidents. Sensitivity to pain is higher during a full moon. A full moon disrupts our sleep. Some people are prone to erratic behavior during a full moon. This is called the werewolf effect. This is also where the word lunatic comes from. Talk to a cop or a nurse. They'll tell you that they can tell when it's getting close to a full moon. Again, science tries to explain this erratic behavior. Like there's more crime during a full moon because it's easier to see. Uh, no, it's also easier to get caught. Right, the science is thin. And notice that all these changes in behavior during a full moon are negative. More crime, more pain, more car crashes. If there are aliens feeding off our negative emotions and they use the moon to do it, well, suddenly everything makes sense. Yeah. But there is good news. You can fight back. Hmm? Reptilian humanoid aliens using technology to alter our reality in order to create negative emotions? Our souls being used for food, then recycled over and over again on the moon? This story is a lot. And how much of it is true? Well, a lot of it depends on your perspective and what you choose to believe. But let's take it one piece at a time. The Anunnaki are documented in Sumerian texts. But there's plenty of documentation of Zeus and Apollo and Athena and the rest of the Greek gods. Same with Roman gods, Norse gods, all gods really. But are any of those gods real? Well, you decide. But Zechariah Sitchin's interpretations of Sumerian texts have been largely discredited and disregarded. Eh. He's been criticized for inaccurate translations of the Sumerian tablets. Eh. Skeptics say he manipulated the translations in order to support his theory. Yeah, but uh, his story is true. Maybe. But the story about gods coming from the sky, creating man or helping man, that story is almost universal. The Anunnaki are also connected to the Great Flood, which is a story found in every culture on Earth. Supporters of the Anunnaki theory claim that human genetics have traces of alien DNA. The truth is, human DNA is pretty boring. Our DNA is close to everything on Earth. Chimps share almost 99% of their DNA with humans. Dogs and cows share around 80%. Birds and humans share 65% of their DNA. Humans even share over 50% of their DNA with bananas. You're related what? to a banana? Yep. Uh, maybe that's why you got... Okay, well, I don't know. I, 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 man, he just, he just dropped the bomb on me. So some of y'all, y'all probably knew that shit. But I, I see that I, I didn't know about DNA like I thought I knew about it. We got 50% of our DNA is found in a banana. So that means a banana, or apple, or orange, or any type of food. Our DNA? I thought that was some some actual living being type shit. That's a fucking fruit. That shit ain't even got no goddamn heart and brain or nothing. And that bitch... Man, y'all. 
I, 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 my, I, that blew my mind. That appeal. <laughs> Dr. Ellis Silver's theory that humans didn't originate on Earth is really interesting. He lays out a lot of scientific evidence to support this theory. But even he admits the theory has some holes. And he's released updates to try and fill in some of these holes. Still, mainstream science rejects the idea that humans originated on a different planet. But there is a wrinkle. In 2020, researchers discovered that about 50,000 years ago, ancient humans procreated with a species that scientists didn't know existed. They call this ghost DNA. And the timing lines up perfectly with Dr. Silver's theory. His book is amazing, and I'd love to do a full episode on how humans might have been transported here. So if you'd like to see that, let me know. That will be a wild ride. Now, let's talk lizard people. Lizard. 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 Better. The most well-known proponent of the reptilian conspiracy is David Icke. My hero. David Icke is well-read, well-spoken, and highly entertaining. His theories are extremely creative. But like most conspiracy theories, you can't prove or disprove him. Yeah but remember in 1991, he claimed to be the son of God and the world was going to end. And he made this claim on television while wearing a turquoise tracksuit. You do claim to be the son of God. Oh, come on, heroes wear tracksuits. The lizard people story seems to have started in 1934 with an LA Times article. A mining engineer claimed to have found tunnels underneath Los Angeles. A Hopi Indian told him the legend of the Lizard People, who are an advanced race that escaped through the tunnels 5,000 years ago. Well, that's why so many movie stars are shape-shifting Lizard People. Easy commute. Uh, maybe, but there are no tunnels and there is no Hopi legend of the Lizard People, so uh, I don't believe that one. And honestly, when I started this topic, I didn't believe any of it. Well, except for the moon stuff. The, the moon is weird. It is. But while researching, I found myself bouncing between feelings of depression and fear and anxiety and especially anger. The message boards, blogs, comment sections I came across are filled with people expressing outrage. They're furious that they have us all trapped in this never-ending loop of misery. That we are made to endure this torturous, unfair life time and time again. We're not given a choice to come back or not. Our only purpose is to be food for our prison guards. But if they truly believe that an advanced race is feeding off our negative emotions, well, they're giving our jailers exactly what they want. There were so many comments that were blame-seeking. I saw a lot of people with a self-centered victim mentality. It was frustrating to read, but I understand it. Life is hard. Life is unpredictable. And life is painful. When things in life go wrong, it's easy to shift responsibility to a theoretical they instead of looking in the mirror. David Icke, John Lear, and others who promote the reptilian conspiracy say that we don't have to exist in an endless cycle of pain and reincarnation. Negative emotions fuel the cycle. Positive emotions can break it. So you have a choice. You can choose to be the change. Choose kindness over anger. Choose acceptance over judgment. And choose gratitude over the endless desire for more. Choose joy over sadness and mercy over revenge. Just choose love over hate. Now, I know it's not easy. I really, I really do. But your life really can be whatever you want it to be. The choice is yours. Facts. Register on PC using the link in the description. He, hey, AJ spit facts at the end of part, man. It really is up to us at the end of the day, my brothers and sisters. Everything, we, we really make life what we want it to be. We the ones who at the end of the day control our emotions. It's just hard as fuck because everything on the outside, you know what I'm saying? The people we involved in and just life in general, things that's going on in life, it's, it's so easy to make that shit fuck with your emotions and how you going this way and that way and that way and this way you know what i'm saying so it's hard but in a literal sense we control our own emotions we can choose to be happy about some shit sad mad uh glad whatever it's all dependent on us but man this video here i i really think this was the best fucking uh the wi-fi video we have watched I learned a lot of fucking shit. I heard a lot of different theories that I would have never fucking heard if it wasn't for my boy AJ. And I'm like him too. I'm like him. 
I if I believe the damn moon theory craziness going on on the moon before I believe the lizard people shit. But my only thing is like talking about the lizard people. I just never thought about the the possibility that aliens could just be blocking us off with some kind of invisible barrier my brothers and sisters that we can't see but they can see and they and then they, they, they like they tricking us like what we seeing is not actually reality it's what they got us designed to see you know what i'm saying that, that I, I like that theory i'm fucking with that i fuck with that conspiracy but the main one i like man more than anything i'm just gonna say this one again because it, it kind of just make my, my my beliefs make more sense when i say that yes i do believe in aliens but then i always be like or somebody could be like so why the aliens ain't never came back and destroyed us well goddamn maybe they fucking need us maybe they using us for some reason now i hope it ain't that reincarnation i don't even i can't even say i don't even believe in reincarnation all i can say is if it's real i i hate it you know what I'm saying? And I'm glad at least that we don't know it's real. Now, I, you, you got to understand what I'm saying when I say that. Because if reincarnation is real and when we die, we come back, we don't fucking remember it. At least we can at least give that much credit to it. At least we don't remember it. Now, if we was dying and then coming back, like if we die and know we going to come back again and we keep knowing we keep going through this shit, that would be fucking hell on earth. Like that would be some torture shit, man. If that's how humans was. I don't know if we come back or not. I don't feel like I ever lived on earth till I'm living now. You know what I'm saying? And I'm finna Go on, let y'all go, my brothers and sisters. I, I digress, man, because I promise you I could be right here talking for another 30 minutes about this goddamn video. And it was a longer video, and I'm just going to go on and let y'all go now. Before y'all leave, make sure you hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and do all that. Comment down below, let me know what the hell you think about all this shit, man. But, yo, let's get in the comments, and we, we'll talk back and forth down now. And before I let y'all go... You know I got to say this. Love, peace, and happiness. Stay safe. Don't stop. Keep going. Yeah.